good morning, everybody. We've come to the end of another week. So grateful you've joined me this week for these daily devotions as we have started our reading through the book of Ezekiel. This morning we are in chapter 5. While you're opening your Bible to that chapter, please be praying for Sunday's worship services, for the Holy Spirit to speak powerfully, for people to be saved, God's children to be encouraged and strengthened in their faith, and for God to do that in your life as well. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 5, hopefully you've read this chapter already, and in my journal, the first thing I wrote in all capital letters was, wow, with an exclamation mark. Wow. This is a very graphic description of God's judgment on Jerusalem and the nation of Israel uh, because of her sins. And he talks about people dying from war, the famine, the plague. He talks about the deportation. It's just a very vivid, vivid, graphic description of what was going to befall, already befalling, and would soon befall Jerusalem with the third siege in 587 B.C. And he summarizes it in verse 11 by saying, this is God speaking, So as I live, declares the Lord God, Surely, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable idols and with your abomination. Remember, they from our readings of the book of First and Second Kings and Chronicles and so on, um, idols everywhere, high places where they worshipped other gods around the country, but at times even erecting things in the temple courtyard and in the temple itself to worship other religions, other gods. That's what he's referring to here. So he says, You have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable idols, with all your abominations. Therefore, because of this, God says, my judgment, my response, I will also withdraw and my eye will have no pity and I will not spare. God says, I am withdrawing my hand of protection. I'm not even going to look in the direction of Jerusalem. I'm withdrawing my hand of protection and she is going to suffer for her sin, for her abomination for her idolatry. Now, in this chapter, what spoke to me personally was verse 5. I was reading this, and and, and as I read verse 5, this thought just overwhelmed me. Verse 5, look at it. He says, Thus says the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set her at the center of the nations with lands around her. And I thought about that. He's judging Jerusalem as the capital of the Judean kingdom, the Jewish people, for their abomination, idolatry, unfaithfulness. But in the midst of this, he says, I have put Jerusalem in the center of the nations with nations all around her. And I got to thinking about history and about geography and and Israel adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea and to the south and to the southeast, southwest rather, is Egypt and Ethiopia. To the north and then to the west is Asia Minor, um, Greece, Italy. And to the west, if you go around the Fertile Crescent, is, is uh, Mesopotamia, which in the south was Babylon, and the north was Assyria and Syria, and then beyond that into Persia and so on. The Promised Land was the crossroads between all those regions. If you wanted to get from Mesopotamia to Egypt, if you didn't want to, rather than risking crossing the the desert, you followed the Fertile Crescent up and down, and you went through Judea. If you wanted to get from Judea over to Greece, and, and you were doing it by land, the trade routes, God really did put them at the center of that part of the globe which means God gave them a great opportunity to have an impact, to be a witness for Yahweh, the only true God. But they didn't do that. They abandoned God. They worshiped idols. They were syncretistic, mixing the worship of God with the worship of other religions. They were unfaithful. They were unethical. They they did not practice judgment. They were materialistic and greedy. They were their lack of absolute devotion and faithfulness to God created all kinds of other sins in their life, and it brings about this judgment. I got to, there the, he says, I put Jerusalem, think about this, God put his people 
at the center of that part of the world where all those trade routes, man, they, they, they had access. They, they had the opportunity to be a witness for God, but they blew it. And the result was uh, God judged them. And he says in verse 14, now notice this. Notice the language in verse 14. Moreover, God speaking says, I will make you a desolation and a reproach among the nations which surround you and the sight of all who pass by. All of these nations around you to whom you could have been a godly witness, you will now be a reproach and an embarrassment, and they'll shake their heads. All those who pass by, those trade routes, the merchants, everybody passing through that part of the world to whom you could have been a godly witness, now they're going to pass by and they don't have that godly witness. They're just going to marvel at the disaster that befell the nation of Israel. And I thought, wow, that's a warning to you and me. That's a warning to the church today in America. It's a warning that absolute loyalty, loyalty to Jesus Christ is essential. Compromising loyalty to Jesus for materialism, for acceptance and approval, for this, for that. They defiled the temple he talks about in verse 11, the sanctuary. Well, the truth is, you and I are God's sanctuary. Our bodies, the temple of, of, of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, uh, the church is called his temple. He dwells within us. We are his representatives. And so the question is, in this world, pagan world, pagan culture where you and I live today, are we a genuine witness to the lost? Are we, are we godly? Are we ethical? Are we kind? Are we loving? Are we gracious? Do we witness? Do we invite people to church? Do we pray for the? Are, are we honoring Jesus or are we doing what they did? God, see, God put them in the in the perfect place to be a witness to the other nations, and they absolutely blew it. God put you in the school you attend, the the place where you work, the the organizations that you you are a, a part of. Uh, when he takes you to the grocery store, when he takes you to Walmart, when he takes you to the restaurant, takes you to a ball game, God is putting you someplace to be a witness. And my question is, are you doing what God's called you to do in those places or are you acting more like the Jews of Ezekiel's day? Are you honoring Jesus or are you defiling his temple? Wow. Wow. What's your answer? And what are you going to do about it? Hey, I'll see you Sunday with a message from God as we worship together. And then Monday as we look at Ezekiel chapter 6. God bless you. Have a great weekend.